Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the model checker, the model checker configurator, and the Revit model checker check set for Western Michigan University. First, let's talk a little bit about the add-in. When you are ready to download the add-in, you simply go to biminteroperabilitytools.com and on this website, you will see several links to other kinds of add-ins. All of these add-ins are available for you, but we're going to specifically talk about the Autodesk Model Checker for Revit and the Autodesk Model Checker Configurator. So you can click on the link, and here you can find some helpful configurator features, help you get started, some helpful videos, sample files, and of course, the ability to download the model checker configurator. Going back to our main page here, to get the Autodesk model checker for Revit, simply click on the link, and here you will find features, videos, and the appropriate model checker for the appropriate Revit version. Once it is downloaded and installed onto your desktop, it will be featured inside Revit. It will be located under BIM Interoperability Tools. In this video, you see other extensions I have, such as the Kobe extension and the Classification Manager. Again, all available at the biminteroperabilitytools.com website. Let's talk about the configurator. Here, I can come right over to the configurator panel and click on the launch button. When I do that, an interface appears where I can either create a new check set file or open an existing check set file. Here I can click on open. Here I can certainly browse to any check set file that I may have saved onto my computer or in a server location. Here it tells me any recent check sets that I can open. And then here in the public library, you'll notice that you have Western Michigan University. This is your check set file. I can click on Western Michigan University. It tells me the title, date, the author, and the description. I'm going to click on OK. That check set file is now loaded. This is downloaded from the biminteroperabilitytools.com website. If I want to take a look at how the check set file was created and managed, I can simply come right over here to check set structure and organization. Here, it gives me a list of all of my different checks, their sections and subsections. In this example, I'm going to look at the air compressor. When I open up the air compressor, it tells me control air and house air. When I expand these two, these are the different kinds of checks. First, it's checking if the equipment exists. Then it's checking the tag ID code. Same thing here with house air. Moving on to air handling unit, so on and so forth. To continue taking a look at the structure, I can come right up here to the actual check, Equipment Exists, and take a look at the preview. Here, I can see Equipment Exists, checks to see if the elements of the specified equipment exist in the model, either run as default, what my result is going to be, what my failure message is going to be, and any sort of preview information that I want to take a look at in terms of that check. If I want to, I can come right over here to the little pencil and I can edit this check. When I click on that, now I can actually see the advanced structure of this check. Again, that name, description, check result, the failure message, and how it was built with the filter. If I want to add in more checks, well, I can come right up here to the wizard. I can add in a check here. Let's say that I want to just add in a check that will list matching elements. I can click on that, say I'm checking views in my model, and I just want to take a look at my sheets. I'm going to hit continue. Now I can either add in filters, or I'm just going to say 
This check only checks if there are instances of the categories placed in the model. So I want to make sure that there are sheets placed in the model. Click on that. Name my check. And add in the description. And then I can go ahead and finish. When that check is done, I'm going to come right back here to check set structure and organization. Something that you might notice here is that my checks, my check that I just created is not in my list currently. To add that check, all I have to do is just come over here to unuse checks and I can click and drag it and place it anywhere in my check set structure. Also, if I was to delete any of these checks here, this will actually move the check over to unused checks. Here, if I was to hit the delete button here for equipment exists, this will permanently delete that check. So this is a good way of removing the checks from the check set and maybe using them later on. When you are done, you can go ahead and click on save. Here, we're going to actually run some of the checks. So I have two different compressors and these compressors here have three parameters here, WMU tag number, type description, and subtype description. For this example, I'm just using three of the WMU parameters. That one is house air. The next one is control air. I'm going to now run the check. To do that, I'm going to come right up here to the model checker and come to setup. Here, when I click on setup, it tells me that no configuration file is associated, so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and browse for my WMU check. Here you can see that it's already listed under my recent files, but I'm going to come over here to the public library and click on Western Michigan University. This will download it from the BIMInteroperabilityTools.com website. Go ahead and click on OK. And after a moment or two, here it is. So in this example, I've checked on air compressor, control air, and house air. What I'm going to do is I just want to make sure that the equipment actually exists. So I'm going to turn this off. So right now I'm just checking if the equipment exists for control air and house air. I'm going to save and close. Now I'm ready to run that check. Simply come up to the model checker, go to run. And here you can add in more models. You can remove all models. You can check all links or you can uncheck links. For this, I just have a test Revit model. I'm going to go ahead and run this check. So after a moment or two, since this is a very basic check, here we get a report. Now, of course, when you add in more checks, okay, it's going to take a little bit longer. But here, let's take a look at what's going on. Now here it gives me a list of everything that could have been run with this entire check set file. But really what we're looking at is this guy, air compressor, control air, and house air. It says four checks, two were used, two were passing, zero fail, two were not run. So let's see what's going on. So we can see that the equipment does exist in the model for both control air and house air. That's great. So let's see what happens when one of these fail. So what I'm going to do here is actually go to close. One thing that you might have noticed is that the WMU tag number is actually blank. So what I'm going to do here is just leave it blank and I'm going to come up here to setup. I want to now check the tag ID code. This checks to see if elements for specified equipment have the correct ID code. So I'm going to check these both on. I'm going to say save and close. Now I'm going to run. I'm going to run that check. And here it gives me two failures. 
It tells me that the equipment does exist, but does not contain the ID code. If I expand ID code here, it actually tells me the air compressors that are missing that ID code. You can export this as an HTML or as an Excel spreadsheet. You can always go back to the last report that was generated. That last report stays with the model. I could just come right up here to view report and this shows me the last report that was generated. For other information about the model checker, you can simply click on help, which takes you to the support webpage for knowledge.autodesk.com. You can also come up here to about. Thank you for watching and have a great day.